This is All Chapped Up, where we push the limits and say what we want, how we want, while pulling your chain to bring you back for more of what you want. I'm Chris Chappell, a.k.a. Chappie, outcast of all types and genders. Welcome to Chappie Hour. Uh, I'd like to uh, inter- uh, introduce my first guest ever on All Chapped Up, and that is uh, Gigi Gustin. All right. So, um, how's it going? How, how you been doing? Uh, the show has been awesome so far, and uh, really looking forward to Sunday, but uh, what's been going on with you? What's been going on with me, like, outside of grit, or... <laughs> um. Yeah, anything. Just, just. Uh, I mean, uh, I seen last night you posted on uh, Instagram uh, some... Uh, virtual reality stuff you was doing with your friends. <laughs> my friend, well, my friend, that would be um, Hannah, actually, from American Grit. She's mm. from Blue Team. I actually, I, I just moved in with her. She's taking a nap next to me, um, trying to take a nap next to me right now, actually. Oh, um, I'll whisper. No. <laughs> but, yeah, so she was just showing me Massachusetts, looking at um, Boston and stuff. I won't say, like, what town we're from because people are crazy. What town we're from. What town she's from, where I'm staying right now. But, yeah, well, we actually went to go watch fireworks. And we missed fireworks because we were too busy um, jamming in the car. And so, <laughs> all right, so what we do now is we just drove all the way up here. So we ended up just walking along some strip and seeing i never done it. I don't think she had ever done it or she had heard about it. Not really, not really done it. So we were like, all right, let's do this. And they tried to convince us to pay like an extra $10 to do like the Star Wars one. You get like a lifesaver in the sky. was telling us how we should do it. But I've never even really seen Star Wars. So we did on um, this one where you're like walking on a building or you're walking on like a plank and you can jump off. And it's pretty interesting. You'll see the videos all over. My Snapchat, her Snapchat, my Instagram story, maybe her Instagram story. Yeah, that's that's what we do when we're not um, at Camp Greer being dumped upside down underwater. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd like to uh, tell all my nerd fans, um, she was completely kidding. She has seen Star Wars. But <laughs> no, she, she probably hasn't, but that's okay. Um, we, we have a lot of nerd followers that are like hugely into that stuff, but that's totally cool. Um, wait, nice plug. Um Okay, so anyways, all right, um, well, the fans just want to know more about you. I mean, obviously, we've got a little bit of your, your backstory on the, uh, on the show, um, but like, whatever, whatever you, you're comfortable talking about, like, like, where, where'd you come from? Obviously, we know you're from New Jersey, um, I guess you said you, uh, you kind of struggled a lot before you got on the show. Anything you want, want to share with, uh, the fans on that, or... I would love to get into my struggle and all of the crazy series of events that happened to me, but really um, shortly before I got onto the show. I don't know if they're going to share it or not. I'm not sure what they're going to air. So just in case they won't say like, everything, but I was at a point in my life where I, I was kicked out and, or not kicked out. Well, yeah, I was evicted after kicked out of my actual house. You know, I, I got kicked out of my actual house, moved in an apartment, got evicted. And a series of horrible events happened. I actually got into some legal trouble because I guess I wasn't able to pay. I had some money issues. Um, I also blew about $30,000 in a year that I got from car insurance money. I was in a car accident, and um, I, I messed up my eye pretty bad. So I had 13 stitches over here. I had a birthmark, and I have a birthmark on this eyebrow, and that's partly why I like the eyelashes so much because a lot of people said, why was it a big deal for you to give up those eyelashes? Why were you crying? You know, you look, you look fine with that. Then. But to me, it was hiding, you know, insecurities. It was hiding the horrible thing that happened to me. It kind of was around the time that a bunch of horrible things happened to me. And everybody goes to stuff, but I almost kind of just relied on my looks to kind of make me feel good about everything else. On. So when they're like, oh, what's something that is important to you that you need to get rid of? I'm like, shit. I don't know. Everybody's expecting to like have important because George Foreman's got something from his dad. Um, Herman from my team had that necklace that had teeth from animals. He's literally killed with his hands and like fear. I'm like, oh, chapstick, sticks. So like, great. Gigi needs to dig deep. And uh, she's about to, I guess, you know, this is American Grit, not America's Next Top Model. So whatever. Let me pull them off. And I did. Still, uh, I'm wearing them right now because they're cute and they're fun. But I've definitely 
put um, things into perspective when it comes into um, dig deeper and what actually matters beyond the surface of people. So American Grit had me exercise that and having a team of three guys that didn't look at me any different. I had a bunch of makeup on there. I didn't just respect me. And even, you know, since we're in the same cabin, we kind of get dressed real quick and stuff. It never looked at me or anything. I was like, wow, there's just multiple people out there. Like, guys aren't all part of all human being creature things. So nope. that was great. Um, being on Grit and meeting all these different people from different walks of life and uh, learning about um, really put things in their perspective for you and put things in their perspective for me and hopefully the viewers realizing that me and I had messed up in such a short period of time being on the show hearing other people's struggles and seeing that years later I mean they were all old and maybe like they were okay they realized wow like, I've not fucked up my life entirely I can turn this around so I just used grit to turn it around and it's so good awesome yeah yeah, we're we're raw and uncut. So say whatever you want. Absolutely, uh, we like that. I, I, that. That's the that's what I when we talked before. That's the that's the gist of this uh, podcast. I want to get the real person, you know, not the not the person you see on TV because obviously you have to play a little bit of a facade, you know. Um, but no, 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 there is no facade. That is oh, really? That's that's Gigi. Okay, well, well, I'm. I, I guess my point is basically like, you know, if you watch any other TV shows, a lot of people, you know, most celebrities put on a facade. So it's not really their people because that's what gets viewers. So, but obviously that's, I think that's what a lot of people uh, like about you and why you have so many followers and why people are, you know, are like, oh my God, Jeezy's so beautiful and everything because your personality just kind of, boom, just shoots out there. And that that's really cool. Um But yeah, it's really awesome that you guys, uh, that you got that shot. And I remember you telling me... um you were down and out and everything, and you were putting in casting videos like everywhere. Like you were just trying to get on something, huh? And then, and then American, you got lucky, and American Grit gave you a buzz. And uh, well, actually, I was putting modeling stuff out there. So American Grit was not a show that I would ever think to apply for. Besides the fact that John Cena is totally gorgeous, so <laughs> I'm sure that because I wasn't born into money, I wasn't born into fame. I did do Texas Tech Tech commercials when I was little, but um. <laughs> I, when I dropped out of college, I knew I wanted to do something big, and I knew that I graduated school, my class was like 100 kids, so like, there's not a lot of people from my area that make it big, so I didn't really know where to go, so I was just like, I'll send the edge shots to New York, and get glimmer shots, and get bikini shots, I'm gonna, and then people start being like, wow, you're really funny, your voice, is that a real voice type of question, so then I kind of came to the, um, Acting and the audition, that's where the casting video stuff came along. But then considering on every casting or website is, I started getting emails from, I think, Netflix that kind of saw me on other things. I'd apply for a couple of MGB things, and some I got, I got an email from Fox. I may have applied somewhere down the line, but there's a lot of sharing of networks. So someone somewhere saw something, and I took Press the submit button. I read the like, it says, "Do you feel like you, you can't? You've lost it. Would you like to win a cash prize? Do you have pictures I don't know how to deal with? Do you do you help? Do you lack this? Do you lack that? Uh huh. Yes. Yes. Check. 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 Flip it, and then I got the call, but I didn't even know what the show what. So when they called me, I went back and I watched part of season one, and I was like, "Oh my god, these are athletes." Have they not, they not seen me, you know, like, I'm not an athlete, but I, I mean, I'm fit, but like, let's be real, I'm not, I'm not season one, and they said, no, they are not finding people that have their grit, I'm looking for people who, like, lost their grit, have messed up, messed up a lot, you know, and uh, mistakes, and... Gigi, can I, can I interrupt you real quick, I've got, for some reason, we got, we're getting every other word, I don't know if it's your connection or my yeah. connection. I hear the echo. Yeah, it's like... Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I'm sure I'm frustrating you. I apologize. It, That's okay. Would you rather? Um, would you rather just? Uh, I, I'll just give you a buzz, and we'll do it over the phone, and then the, it'll be bored. Bro, that's how I wanted to do it. I know, right? I'm so I'm so bad. But see, I wanted I wanted to see if we get our our our, our guests a little interaction and stuff, but. It's not working today, and I mean that's just the way today's been for me. It's just if. It, uh, Murphy's Law, man, I'm telling you, it's it's kicking my ass today, and it's...
Hello. All right. Hopefully this is a little bit better. Okay. Um, back to where we were at. You were talking about um, the audition process and how you were kind of like, well, I'm not, I'm not very, uh, you know, athletic or as far as like you're, you're not muscular or anything. And they were telling you um, that we're not looking for people with grit. We're looking for people that lost their grit. So, okay, uh, continue. I apologize for interrupting you. Yeah, the... Well, once I expressed my concern about not thinking that I was physically in shape enough for the show, they had then told me that the point of the show is to take the everyday people and test them to push themselves because we all need some sort of like push in life because of things um, we've been going through because of the things that caused us to lose our grit. So the challenges are more so designed, as as you'll see, to test people's more so perseverance. It's not really who can lift the most weight, who can run the fastest. And also a lot of this is, is teamwork. You know, at the end, there's one winner, but up until you know, the end, everybody is on a team. And you're only as strong as your weakest member, you know? So a lot of people have a very diverse group. I, I got green team has been getting some criticism saying, oh, of course, um, you know, green team has won so much because George Foreman is on their team. But it's about working together. It's team chemistry. And that's a quality that, you know, all people need to have. And even big people, even maybe even George Foreman himself, like, I don't know how he works with a team. And it's not always about being individualized. You know, a lot of us don't have a lot of friends. There's a lot of people that have social anxiety, agoraphobia, and have a hard time working with people. So to a lot of people, the challenge wasn't even more so like the actual challenges itself. It was working with a team. It was leaving your house. It was being away from home. It was controlling your temper, learning to live with, you know, these random personalities, learning patience. There's a lot of there's a lot of learning to be done outside of the challenges, and that's why they just pick people that lack all of these things. And you'll see in the last episode, some team chemistry is lacking when Team Yellow, two people choose to pick safety from elimination, getting almost no points from their team, and, you know, they're, they're losing people. And Team Green, my team, two of us had picked to put ourselves up for elimination, being a sacrifice and getting us the most points. It just goes to show that not only, it's not just that we had, well, had, that George Foreman was stolen from us, but it's not just that we had George Foreman that we were winning. It's because we worked well together. We both, I think our whole team didn't really, we didn't really lack people skills. I know Michael from my team, you know, he, him being, you know, a gay man had had some issues in the past and he was fitting in. He didn't even know he was going to get picked for a team. So, what was great about that was he did step up and become the leader in our second challenge. And from then on, we, you know, we had, we had done really good so far at least. <laughs> yeah. My, Michael, um, speaking of Michael, um, Morgan, he's going to be on uh, my show Monday at 10. Uh, looking forward to that as well. Uh, so tune in for that guys. Um, but yeah, he, he's great on that. And one question I have for you is um, I, I've been watching it and I don't really, I mean, I could see where you're saying a lot of people are kind of down on green because of what happened this last episode. But I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, in the in the great scheme of things, yes, you're a team. But at the end of the day, I mean, it it's it's you got you have to do what you have to do to win, right? So like when when you know John Burke went up to you guys and was like, uh, uh, he says. You know, if you guys are trying to sabotage me, you know, and I mean, I get where he was coming from, but on this, on the same token, like, I don't believe that that was like the actual intention. I think you guys were just pissed off and, you know, uh, what you had every right to be, you know, and I don't know. I, I think of the grand scheme of things, if, if everybody's been watching the show, that they know that, you know, you're just out for each other's best interests, regardless. You know, you just want the, – the main goal of the show is to find your grit. Whether you win it all or not, I mean, as long as you take something from it and learn something from it, right? I mean, that that's the yeah, that's the key. Really, but, well, the issue with the teams is some people are in the best interest of the team. Some people are just out for themselves. And, yes, there is 
going to be one winner, but we're not down to that yet. Right now, everybody's still a team. So to not be a team player, when you sabotage your team, you sabotage yourself. And that's why, you know, our team has been doing so well. We all sacrifice each other. We make sure everybody is comfortable. You know, you would not you would never have seen anybody from my team pick safety from elimination. You know no, I mean? no, you wouldn't. Yeah, absolutely not. I didn't. I, I don't. I don't get that at all. So yeah, I was. I was. I was disappointed with that with the yellow team this week. Just as a fan, I was. Yeah. Yeah, and, and don't get me wrong. I I'm friends with both of them, Scarlett and Carla, and I'm cool with Rich too from yellow team. Um. But I'm just these are these are the facts though. These are why their team has so far been falling apart and Green has been doing so good. And the only reason we don't have our whole entire team was because somebody was stolen from us and in a competition, you know, but I mean Blue Team was smart in what they did. They did what was even though it really was sheer honesty, it was it was a mis- not a mistake, but they both just quickly, because they're a team two right now, they quickly just saw a high number. They knew that the highest number was going to win the competition. They knew that the main goal was was to win. You know, I don't think they really cared what the box said. It just happened to be that it said steal a competitor. It was good for them because that was definitely the best option for their team to add another person. But it goes to show, though, there was, there was sacrifice. It's not just Oh, you know, this will be good for us. We'll take George. It was this is this is a high number, so I'm going to take this because the higher the number, the bigger sacrifice for me. But the closer we are to winning. So for yellow team to pick, you know, things that were good for themselves with five points each to me, you know, it's mind blowing. And and the red team, I don't know what's going on with them. I think they both ended up with no points. So I mean, they're just the hot mess. <laughs> That was that was a disaster last week, wasn't it? Um, the whole like they fell apart real quick once. That's the thing, though, is we've all we all have our own issues that Allison is hard to get along with. Like I said, the challenges are challenges that we all face, but every team has challenges within itself that is going to be obvious before the actual challenges being that. You know, some people have the one, uh, the boat race, I think, are hit for that was trust. You know, and how much trust do you think Red Team has and what place did they come in? But, you know, so the show is about, it, it's a huge learning and growing experience. That's why it was really, it was really important that I got to do something that, especially being one of the, well, the youngest competitor, I think I, I've been able to learn from adults, you know, experienced people and get some advice and get some guidance. And one of the reasons I wanted to go on the show was because I lack a lot of guidance in life. You know, I'm a smart girl. I can figure things out on my own. But um, and there's something we said about people that learn things the hard way, but I really was looking for, I was looking for a cadre. I was looking for John Cena, anyone to tell me, Gigi, this is where you're messing up and this is how you make it better. So being on the show, I got to meet uh, 16 other individuals that were all a part of that growing experience for me. So that, that's what the show has meant to me, you know, so far. And I'm glad that people are um, enjoying the show. And I'm actually really amazed with the amount of people that reached out to me after the one episode when I talked about you know, I said, I don't know that if my team has won the family visit that I would have had anybody come for me. And the amount of people that were like, you know, I felt alone. And now that you're learning to stand on your two feet with you, what you've gone through, now I think I can stand on mine. And that's one thing that we all wanted to do on the show. We, we all want to be inspirational and inspire people and make a difference. So I'm really glad that John Cena and our cottage are picking us for the teams have given us the opportunity to do so. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. Um, as far as uh, the relationships goes on the on the show, um, I mean, it, se- it seems to me like um, obviously that, you know, there's some tension, I mean, with anything because it's a competition. But like um, and you did say um, so you you have remained friends with with quite a matter of fact, you said you're you're uh, you and Hannah are roommates now. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. I mean, that, that that's a, that's something to be said. I mean, shoot, not only did oh. you. I wouldn't even call those roommates. This is adoption. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, um, you know, Hannah's. You know, she's she's got a roomy place. Um, you know, she's doing her own thing, but she's she's still young too. You know, she's she's still living with mom and dad. They had another room. They knew that. You know, I was. I'm still walking miles to get to the laundry mat. You know, they said, just come here, be comfortable. We can do some press together. You know, it's just a break. You know, offering some help. You know, Hannah's a friend that. 
kind of that friendship that I lacked back at home. Like, if I was on the show and knew Hannah and she wasn't on the show, I would have had to say, no one would have come for me because Hannah would have come. So I found what I was lacking in that episode. I definitely found that. I uh, definitely found my, my grit with that. <laughs> awesome. That's really cool. That's a That's a hell of a story. I mean, like... There's not a lot of people that can say that, you know, I mean, like, you, you definitely are blessed, and I'm sure you know that, um, you know, there's a lot of people that don't know what to do when they get in the position that you were in before the show, you know, and, you know, um, uh, I hate to kind of go off key here, but like, I, I kind of get your your opinion on this, um, you know, we got a lot of guys out there that, uh, you know, have fought in the military, you know, this is a military show, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's run by military cadres. Um, you know, and, and they come back and they're messed up and, and, uh, you know, they end up homeless and they don't know what to do. There's no, there's, it's like the, the help isn't there for them, you know, and I don't know if you, if you follow that very much, but I kind of like to get your, your thought on that if, if, if you don't mind. Um, well, the thing is the cadre are trying to find the grit as well. Um, you know, yes, they're mentor, mentors and being that they serve, they're great people to learn from, but like you said, you know, they're, they're messed up too. And they're learning, as much as we're learning from them, they're learning from each, from each and every, every one of us. Um, it's all about embracing experiences and lifestyle and learning. And when you're open enough, one thing that the cadre did that was great that we also, you know, agreed to do is be open about our, our experiences and our mistakes that we could, we could learn from each other. So it's great to have a mentor that doesn't act completely perfect, you know, being great at conversations. And one of my issues is I, um, I, I do think off of adrenaline without thinking, I said, I want a chihuahua. I, want, I bought one with my rent money. You know, I do things that are dangerous. I do things that are risky. And my cadre said, you know, I've, I've done the same thing. I've been there. And this is what this is what you got to do. These are the people you got to surround yourself with. But he didn't just act like, you know, he, he knew it all. He said, you know, I've been there too. It, it, it's okay. Everybody makes your mistakes. Even though they're cadre and they're military people, they're not perfect. You know, they still, um, you know, they still the same we all have two arms, two legs type of thing. You know, they didn't act like they were better in that sense. Of course, there's a respect level there being a cadre, but I can't really speak much for them because I'm a contestant, so. <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah, I was just, I was just more speaking on, on, on a veteran, on a veteran standpoint. And yeah, I mean, that's great. I mean, no, you're not. I am though, but so, <laughs> um, and I was just, yeah, just, just, just an outside view is all I was curious about. Um, so with that being said, um, any 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 plugs that you want to um, that you want to put in there as far as uh, are, are you working on anything at the current moment? I think we had talked about before uh, the podcast. You said something about a movie you're working on right now. I do have a short film coming out in about a month or so. Um, I'm really into horror films and into scary stuff. I'm into anything creative and weird because I'm creative and weird. So um, when that comes out, there'll be there'll be a link on my Instagram and all my social media. Um, but the thing is, yeah, I'm, I'm an actress and yes, I'm a model. I did just um, I just got a, a magazine spread in West Hollywood Lifestyle. So that's pretty cool. That's in stand. So if you're in Hollywood, make sure you go pick one up. I'm like in the very middle. I got a cute little centerfold page spread thing going on. But um. The show, though, was not meant to enhance my career. Like I said to people, I didn't go on America's Next Top Model American Grit. Well, I went there because I, when I saw the casting information and said, are you lacking this? And like, do you need this? Have you made this mistake? Do you feel like you're losing hope? I answered yes to all those questions. I went there to better myself, not to help my acting career, not to help this, this, or that. Um, but... That being said, but yeah, I, I like I like the TV, I like the camera, and I like the camera outside of reality TV. I like to do films, I I like to do documentaries. I've done some um, investigation, discovery stuff. One of them where I was getting choked out by um, <laughs> some guy. I think he was actually, you know, he was uh, my my dad, but on television. But I like that because the true crime documentaries, they're real stories that happen and. I think that people need to, you know, know and recognize that these types of things happen. So I, I like getting to do that, but I also like to do the funny stuff. I like to do the scary stuff. Scary movies are my favorite. So, yeah, I do have the short film coming out. Um, I have all black contact lenses that are pretty cool. They look really dope on camera, but you can only wear them for, like, six hours or less than six hours, like four and a half hours at a time, I think, because they cover your whole entire eye and they're 
the bitch to get in and out. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that's, that's what you do, though. That's, that's what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Now, um, you say you like horror movies, so um, do you have, you have like, a, a legitimate, like, hands down, like, you could watch it a hundred times and it still wouldn't be enough to watch it? The Conjuring. <laughs> wow, yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a great flick. That's a great flick. I'm actually, I actually like horror movies, too. A lot of the new horror movies that are out, they just stuck. There hasn't been, there wasn't a good horror movie out for a long ass time. Then there's The Conjuring, and I was like, fuck yeah, great horror movie. Then the next one that came out, I was built to see it, and that one sucked. So I just saw, like, oh, what did I see? Get Out, and it was absolutely terrible. <laughs> I know, right? I, I, it was, it's bad. It's, uh, I, I was saying the same thing to my wife the other day, that, that these movies that come out now, because she, you know, she's just now starting to get into horror movies. She never really liked them, because, one, she can't stand clowns. Like, she's, uh, she's terrified of clowns. Um, but she, she just started getting into them. And like I was telling her, I was like, I've always liked horror movies, but the new ones that come out, man, they're just, I don't know. They're, they're bad. They're, they're horribly written. And it's not, I don't know. Like I'm all about the classic horror movies. Um, but that, that's cool that, that, that you're into that and you're, and you're still young. So you still, you know, you, you know, the older movies, that's good stuff. Um, well, yeah, I'm, I'm a fetus. <laughs> I'm a fetus. <laughs> well, <laughs> I didn't say that, but <laughs> I mean, hey. Uh, so, as far as that goes, um, any any not spoilers for this week, but any any kind of teaser for Sunday? We 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 could you could kind of tell us that that it'll make us want to tune in even more than we already do. Well, there's a couple of teasers out online right now. I think it's it's pretty evident that Hannah gets in. Some sort of fight with somebody. I think her her name might rhyme with um Schmalison. Um, <laughs> so, hmm. so uh, I know there's some um you know there's some stuff that went down on the show. There's some stuff that's gone down after the show. Um and yeah, it doesn't happen when it's that. Uh, I'm not one. I definitely you know not one up for spoilers. So I don't want to say anything beyond what's already out there. But I think that's all that's really showed. You know, you can see that. I mean, what there's to look forward to, though, is, you know, Green Team just got George Foreman stolen from them. Blue Team now has George, which puts them at three, and which puts Green Team at three. So I guess it would be pretty interesting um, to see how Green Team does competing without George and how Blue Team does with George and then how, you know, how red and yellow, whatever, how whatever happens to them happens to <laughs> Um, I want to take a moment uh, on a serious note. Um, your guys' uh, support for uh, hashtag Grit for Cure, um, if you could talk a little bit about that, I mean, uh, for our fans or whatever, just let them know, you know, where they can go and, and stuff like that and, and, and how, how strongly you are uh, behind that. Well, um, you know, Grit Cares is something that was started by Melanie Mahana. She's the... Um, a member of Blue Team who has been eliminated, which a lot of people were really sad about. You know, the viewers were sad, and we were all sad. You know, Melanie wasn't on my team, but she was a loss for everybody at camp. Um, part of her experience, and I think probably what she would say be the main rewarding part of her experience, was meeting a girl named Terea Garvin, who was getting fitted for a wig at, I think it was Hella Gorgeous or something. Um, Melanie, as you would have seen in episode two, I think it was, mm -hmm. her choice. Her team would win the challenge and she decided to shave her head. And she had the longest, prettiest, healthy hair there. And one of my friends said, oh, your hair is as long. I said, guys, I have hair extensions. That doesn't count. Melanie is a hair model. She's taking good care of it. It's down to, it was down to almost her butt. So, um, you know, for her to shave her head and rid herself of that, you know, it, it was a security blanket. I mean, like, I do the bronzer, I do the lip liner, I do the eyelashes. That was that was her accessory. But for her to be able to see it go to such good use to help somebody and meet a girl actually battling leukemia, who was Sheree, you know, that was extremely eye-opening and, I think, rewarding for the both of them. Um, but Melanie, you know, stayed in touch with, with the family. She had met Sheree's parents and all that. And I think it was in late December, Melanie got news that Sharia, the girl, had actually passed away at 16 years old. So Melanie, you know, once she found out, was, was really itching to find the parents and reach after them and see how they were doing, see if everything was okay. 
And once, you know, that happened, Melanie had got the idea, you know, episode three, she had found out was going to be dedicated to Taraya. That was the episode where America gets to meet Taraya. America gets to meet, you know, the beautiful, strong girl, you know, behind what grit really is, to be honest, you know, to Melanie said the girl has such a smile on her face and, you know, she just got done, you know, her, her surgery or whatever the hell they have to go through. Um, I I don't have anybody super close to me that's gone through cancer, but, you know, seeing the way that it can affect people and people's lives and everyone around them is is crazy. You know, we did actually at our, our Grit Cares event, Oh, yeah, well, I'm skipping ahead a little bit. So, Melanie, once you found out episode three, it was going to be dedicated to Terea, said, you know, I want, to, I want to make sure I'm with the parents to watch it. In fact, let's do it bigger. So, her and then anybody who wanted to jump on board and help her, I'll put our money out for flights and stuff. And went back, we went back to Savannah, Georgia, where we filmed, and we held a fundraiser. And half of the proceeds, or 10% of the proceeds made at Coach's Corner, where we held the fundraiser and did a live screening of the episode, um, go to Cure for Childhood Cancer. And then I think it was the day after that, a few of us went up to Memorial Hospital and met the kids. And this is the closest I have ever been to someone that was actually battling cancer. And, yeah, it's easy for everybody to say, oh, yeah, cancer is kids is horrible. It's a terrible thing. But how much do you really know? You know, it got real when I, I was sitting on the bed of a girl um, who just had her sweet 16 from the hospital because she was battling cancer. She lost all of her hair. We met a bunch of kids that day. So that's when afterwards we decided, you know, let's, you know, we had made a bunch of money, but Melanie said, well, we, we've got to do more. We have to. we got to raise more awareness. we got to do whatever we can for Terea. People need to know Terea's story. And so uh, Melanie got, got the link where it's a picture of Melanie, John Cena, Terea, and Terea's parents from the day that Melanie got to meet her. Mm-hmm. And we can click that link and donate to Cure for Childhood Cancer. And what Cure does is they make it so that, that they fund um, ways for the parents to so get to the hospital and they help with transportation and, you know, they help with as much as they can when it comes to some treatment and all that. So it's, it's super important. And also the money also goes towards um, technology or research also to help find a cure so we were our initial goal was to reach five thousand dollars and then after we talked it over or melanie talked it over with us she said what do you guys think about raising the ten thousand dollars and we said yeah you know i think if people could see you know um the story and see how real it is because for me you know it's easy for anybody to say yeah cancer fucking sucks you know probably think nobody wants it but to be that close and you know up close and personal with somebody going through it and me just being someone i'd never witnessed that was extremely eye-opening for me and i'm sharing the link constantly it's in some of my social media bios and um it's really easy to find it's in melanie's bio it's on instagram it's on some other cast members bio i'll post it after um you post their podcast so people will know where to donate. But that's kind of what all those ties were. That's what Grit Cares is all about. Um, and so finding your grit, you know, this girl, Taraya, she she had her grit. She To have a smile on your face after treatment, once you're losing your hair and fighting for your life, and mm-hmm. someone to be a light for the world and, and be able to smile and talk to people, that is that is grit, to wake up and be a positive person, you know, it was really easy for me, I was living in my car for a few days, it was really easy for me to, you know, wake up and to go, fuck this, fuck my life, my life sucks, you know, right. to want, but I'm, I'm in good fucking health, you know, I am blessed with that, so to be a 16-year-old girl battling that, and her, her dad said to us that when she said, well, when he said to Terea, his daughter, you know, like, like, what are your thoughts? She said, Dad, I got to do what I got to do. And that's my thoughts now. If I just, you know, woken up when I woke up in my car and said, today, you know, I got to do what I got to do to get better. Um, and, and I did it. I wallowed in my sadness. I felt bad for myself for a while. And that, to me, was the biggest demonstration of grit. Outside of Melanie shaving her head, Terea is who showed me the most grit. You know, it wasn't anybody on um, the cast. I think a lot of people found the grit, absolutely. But in terms of being, you know, a prime example of what grit is, it's the sacrifice that Melanie made, and it's the person that Terea is. So I hope that people will, will donate. People have been, we're almost at our, well, not almost, but we are well past the halfway point to our $10,000, and we did raise some extra, or, some money that night that we gave 
directly to um, the family. So this is this all goes to the hospital. That's where people's money are going when they donate. Wow, that that's incredible. Um, and I, I've posted a couple times on Twitter too. I, I definitely support it and definitely have donated. Um, and, and like I said before, all of all of the followers. I mean, honestly, if you just go in your change drawer and find one dollar, one dollar a person. I mean, we've, we between everybody on American Grit and, and myself, we we've got probably over twelve, thirteen thousand followers. And that's thirteen thousand dollars right there for just a dollar a person. If you can if you can afford to go on Twitter, you can afford one dollar to help, you know, an amazing cause. There's a lot of charities out there now that have gotten a bad rap for, you know, taking uh taking uh, some of the money and not doing what they're supposed to, but I, I know for a fact that this is a legitimate charity and uh I, I really uh, feel strongly about it. And I know that uh, you do too, Gigi, and uh, as well as the rest of the casts. And uh, I really appreciate you putting that out there on the podcast because uh, people really need to know about it. Uh, because it is, you don't need a show, even though some people do, but you don't, you don't have to have a show to get your grit. People have grit all the time, you know, and, and, and Tamara had definitely had, had grit. So that is the definition for sure. Um, if there's, Anything else that you would like to uh, uh, promote, you know, go ahead. Uh, if not, I really, really appreciate you being on the show today. Um, I, I know you're very busy. You're, you're slammed. So, um, but I do want to say thank you so much. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know that I have anything else. Thank you. But if you have anything else you want to ask, cool. But if not, um, yeah, it's been, been great. Thank you for having me on um, Shafty Hours. Well, I uh, no, not a problem. I, I I do have other questions, but um, I kind of when, when you told me before, you know, there's things that are still going to be run on the show. You know, we don't really want to spoil too much, and I, you know, a lot of the questions I have are, are before some, some of the things that happened before the show. Kind of, you know, what what turned you into the person, just just stuff like that. Not and and if you've already kind of went over there on the show, that are episodes that have yet to be aired. I'd rather not, you know, go into that. Um, and maybe, maybe if, if you want to, maybe after the show is done airing, uh, I'm planning on getting, you know, a, as many as the uh, cast as, as we can on the show. And maybe then we can kind of go over uh, some things like that the, after the show, you know, so nothing's spoiled. If you're okay with that, that would be great. We would love to have you again. Yeah, we'll, we'll touch base for sure. Um, <laughs> maybe next time it won't be such a clusterfuck. And <laughs> I, I'm so sorry about that. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, um, yeah, well, um, you just shoot me an email and uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you so much, DJ. I hope you have a great day and a good weekend. And thanks for listening to Chappy Hour, everybody. And have a great day. And remember, love each other. 